Thank you very much, Theresa. Um, it really is a great pleasure to be here, and I thank Joe for inviting me. Um, really, I learned an awful lot last night and tonight. And um, to start, I'm going to explain to you why this year, the 1st of April, unusually, wasn't April Fool's Day for me. Had it not been suggested by Joe in his email to me on the 1st of April, how my contribution to this session might be entitled. As a lawyer, and with absolutely no experience in political science or in social science, I might have had some difficulty in deciding how I could usefully contribute to this session. However, the title suggested by Joe was, and I quote, the role of citizens' assemblies in the, challenging, in the challenge of strengthening democracies. Having had the honour of being the chairperson of the Citizens' Assembly, which was established by a resolution of both houses of the Oireachtas in July 2016, for approximately two years to the end of June 2018, I feel that my experience in that role enables me to address that topic, although, for the reasons that will become obvious, I would broaden it out to cover the role of deliberative democracy processes. The Citizens' Assembly followed the model used for the Convention on the Constitution, which was established by a resolution of both houses of the Oireachtas in July 2012. Um, although there are some differences between the two processes, and probably the most significant difference was the membership of each. The Convention's membership, which totaled 100 members, comprised 66 random, randomly selected citizens, 33 politicians from both houses of the Oireachtas and um, from the Northern Ireland Assembly and an independent chairperson who was Tom Arnold. In the case of the Citizens' Assembly, the resolution of the Oireachtas provided that, that, like the Convention, the total number should be 100. But that was comprised of a chairman appointed by the government and 99 citizens entitled to vote at referendums. Um, randomly selected so as to be broadly representative of Irish society. In short, there were no politicians involved in the Citizens' Assembly. I think that was a significant difference. Um, notwithstanding the differences between them, um, it was stated in the first report of the Citizens' Assembly, um, which was presented to the um, Arachthus in, um, at the end of June 2017, um, it was stated that both were deliberative democracy processes. And um, in, in the report, it was explained that deliberative democracy is a school of thought in political theory that claims that political decisions should be the product of fair and reasonable discussion and debate among citizens. In a subsequent paragraph of the report, um, the understanding of the Citizens' Assembly of the value of a deliberative democracy process was set out, and I actually think it's worth quoting that paragraph. It stated, In deliberation, citizens exchange arguments and consider different claims that are designed to secure the public good. Through this conversation, citizens can come to an agreement about what procedure, action or policy will best produce the public good. Deliberation is a necessary precondition for the legitimacy of de democratic political decisions. Rather than thinking of political decisions as the aggregate of citizens' preferences, deliberative democracy claims that citizens should arrive at political decisions through reason and the collection of competing arguments and viewpoints. In other words, citizens' preferences should be shaped by deliberation in advance of decision-making rather than by self-interest. And I, I probably if I heard Mary Daly's uh, presentation before that was put into the um, report, I would probably have said rather than self-political party interest. But... Um, it is the, uh, this is very important. It is of the utmost importance to emphasise that the role of a deliberative democracy process, such as the Convention of the Citizens' Assembly, is purely advisory. In each of those processes, it was the legislature that was the recipient of the advice. 
Now, this is clearly illustrated by the joint resolution of the Houses of the Oireachtas, which established the Citizens' Assembly. It set out the task, the Assembly, it, 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 what the task of the uh, Citizens' Assembly was. It was to consider, make such recommendations as it should see fit, and report to the Houses of the Oireachtas on five specified matters. And these were, most of you will probably recollect, the first was the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, the second was how best we respond to the challenges and opportunities of an ageing population, thirdly, fixed-term parliaments, fourthly, how, uh, the manner in which referenda are held, and fifthly, how the state can make Ireland a leader in tackling climate change. So they were the matters the uh, Assembly had to consider, uh, make recommendations on, and report to the Oireachtas. The task of uh, the Convention was similar, but um, so they had to uh, consider and make recommendations, but their task related to eight specific constitutional issues. And they also had um, authority to consider an, any other constitutional issues they thought were important. Um, it is interesting to analyse the impact of the Convention, the work of the Convention and of the Assembly in relation to the amendment of the Constitution over the past four years. This can be easily done by reference to the list of amending acts at the beginning of the most recent printed edition of the Constitution, which is dated, which was printed in December 2018, and that's also to be found on the EISB website produced by the Office of the Attorney General, and it is also updated to December 2018. By December 2018, and this is interesting, the Constitution had been in operation for 81 years. Over that period, there had been 31 amendments between mid-2015 and the end of 2018. There had been three amendments of the Constitution following recommendations by the Convention or the Assembly, which in turn had obviously been followed by referenda. The, refer the recommendations of the Convention and the referenda which followed resulted in the following amendments. The 34th Amendment, uh, given effect to by an amending act which was signed on the 29th of August 2015 and which provided that marriage be contracted in accordance with law by two persons without uh, distinction as to their sex. And then there was the 37th Amendment, which, ga um, which uh, gave effect to an amending act, which was signed in, on the 27th of November 2018, which there wasn't an awful lot of concern about or interest in, I think, uh, which provided for the removal of the word blasphemous from the Constitution. Uh, now, interestingly, another recommendation of the Convention in relation, uh, um, on the of the Constitution in relation to the age of eligibility uh, to the Office of President. Um, that was the subject of a proposal for amendment uh, by uh, the uh, Convention, and it was put to the people in a referendum and rejected in May 2015. So not all recommendations of um, a, a, a deliberative uh, democracy processes on, in relation to the Constitution um, get passed. Now, the amendment of the Constitution which reflected a recommendation by the Assembly to the Oireachtas related to its consideration of what was described in the resolution of the Oireachtas as the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution. Now, when the Citizens', Citizens Assembly was dealing with that matter, uh, the consideration of the matter and I think you probably all understand this, but at the beginning it might have been a bit confusing. The consideration of the matter was framed by reference to Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3 of the Constitution, which acknowledged the right to life of the unborn with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother. And that um, provision had been inserted in October 1983 um, in consequence of the Eighth Amendment. Um, the recommendation of the Citizens' Assembly was that Article 40, uh, Section 3, Subsection 3, should be replaced by a constitutional provision that explicitly authorises the Oireachtas to legislate to address the termination of pregnancy. And the 36th Amendment um, that recommended... Um, um, sorry, the 36th Amendment reflects 
that um, recommendation because the amending act was signed on the 18th of September 2018 and uh, it provided for regulation of termination of pregnancy and a new article 40 section 3 subsection 3 was inserted and that now reads provision may be made by law for the regulation um, of termination of pregnancy. Now the time scale I think this is interesting, and I just did a little reflection on it over the last few days myself. The time scale of the various processes which led to that amendment, the 36th Amendment, is worth recording. Broadly speaking, the work of the Assembly uh, on the Eighth Amendment commenced in October 2016 and continued until uh, its report on the matter was presented to the Houses of the Oireachtas at the end of June uh, 2017. And within a short period thereafter, a very short period, um, a joint um, committee of the Houses of the Oireachtas was established to consider the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly. And the very comprehensive and detailed work um, of that committee took place over approximately uh, five months. The committee, you probably recollect, was chaired by Senator Catherine Noon, and they did very, very interesting work. And I found myself... Uh, uh, chained to it, to the, 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 the Oireachtas website, most evenings watching what, what had transpired. But in any event, um, after their report, after just five months' work, um, the thir uh, 36th Amendment Bill was initiated um, on the 7th of March uh, 2018. You recollect that the referendum was held on the 25th of May 2018, and the, vote, the, the, the people voted in favour of amendment. And um, the amending act, as I've already said, was signed into law on the 18th of September 2018. And um, the so, the, so the, at that stage, the constitution is amended, but it required legislation. And this is a, a, an inter another interesting aspect of it. The necessary legislation to give effect to the new Article 40, uh, Section 3, Subsection 3, and that's the Health Regulation of Pregnancy Act 2018, was signed into law on the 20th of December 2018 and became effective on the 1st of January uh, 2019. So that, that, that is a, a, a very interesting um, analysis of uh, how um, a timescale in relation to a very important issue can be truncated to some extent if, if, if you have a citizens' assembly and if you have a joint committee of the Oireachtas. Um, and then, obviously, if you have a referendum shortly thereafter. Now, to be honest, um, I'm not trying to uh, present uh, a proof of the pudding um, uh, explanation of the um, impact of uh, the work of um, conventions or citizens' assembly. In, in, in truth, I want, just want to emphasize that the foregoing is a factual narrative, a factual narrative of the outcome of the work of the Convention um, and uh, on three aspects of the Constitution and the outcome and consideration by the Assembly of only one of the uh, matters that it was tasked to consider. Um, um, whether and this is, this is the, the, the question mark, and this is where I say uh, I'm not running the proof of the pudding line. Whether those outcomes alone are evidence that deliberative democracy processes, to use the words uh, that are used in the very informative uh, introduction uh, to this session, um, those words are, would appear to be the best way in which our democratic system and values can be safeguarded, is a question for assessment um, by those with appropriate knowledge and expertise in the area of politics and politic, political science, rather than by me. And we have two here this afternoon, um, and we're in the afternoon already. I have to watch the time. Um, but anyway, what I want to go on and just to say, and I hope I, 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 don't, I don't intend to take, I hope I won't take up too much time. What I want to say is that on the basis of my experience as chairperson of the Assembly, what I can do is, an, is express an opinion on how a process such as the Assembly can be most effective and how it could result in, to use the words used in the introduction, more genuine 
and honest dialogue with the citizens. In fact, in the uh, Assembly's final report, um, a, a, there was included a chapter, uh, it was Chapter 8, which was entitled Chairperson's Reflections on Citizens' Assembly Process. That was the title. And in that chapter, in nine sections, I described issues encountered by the Assembly, outlining any commentary um, and discussion which had emerged in public in relation to each matter. As regards some of the matters, I merely made observations in response to what was in the public domain. However, more frequently, I made direct uh, recommendations uh, for the Oireachtas to consider in the future before embarking on another similar process. Once again, it must be emphasised that those rec recommendations were purely advisory. Um, however, I believed at the time that it would be in the public interest for the Oireachtas to consider them. The first matter was the importance of transparency. It was noted that the Citizens' Assembly had at all times operated on the principle of maximum openness and transparency, which was, which was manifested in a number of ways, live streaming of all the public meetings, all papers presented by the experts who, 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 who attended the meetings and spoke to the members. They were put online almost immediately. And um, all policy decisions uh, were made available to the public. Um, uh, and sometimes the rationale for the decision was set out. And all of these things were on the website, such as um, the rules and procedures, recruitment guidelines, guidelines for, for facilitators and note takers, and voting arrangements and procedures. So nothing was hidden. Um, and in that chapter, I expressed the view that such transparency should be a hallmark of any future citizens' assembly. Now, from my perspective, the most important section of the, uh, of the chapter addressed membership of the Assembly. An issue had arisen in 2018 in relation to the re re recruitment, recruitment of members, a number of members, seven in fact, and uh, while that issue was addressed, it was emphasised that any future incarnation of the Assembly, um, there, sh uh, there should be a strict adherence to the recruitment criteria laid down by the Oireachtas. I, I consider that should be essential, strict um, 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 adherence to it. And um, in fact, I, I went so far as to recommend that those criteria should be addressed as early on as the request for tender uh, in relation to the uh, process in relation to recruitment. Um, Another factor, and this is probably more, more interesting than what, I, what I've just been talking about, another factor uh, in relation to membership um, uh, that had been the subject of much uh, commentary um, in the public domain was the fact that each county had not been represented in the membership. Um, and there were lots of... Uh, uh, Joe Duffy had dealt with that on a lot of occasions. And... Um, I, I, I recommend that the Oireachtas should consider this point. Uh, the view I expressed was that a selection process which sought to ensure that each county would be represented might potentially lead to a less representative sample than the methodology which was used in the case of the Citizens' Assembly. But again, that is something, I, I was just drawing it to the attention of the Oireachtas, and that is something they have to deal with. Um, Obviously, my re uh, reflections on the membership um, focused on the impact uh, participation in the process had on the individual members. Um, in my introduction to the final report, um, in thanking the members for their enthusiasm, interest and commitment to the process, I observed that I had been truly astounded by their commitment, energy, openness and hard work and indeed their collegiality. Um, and uh, th th that was a genuine observation um, on the basis of my observation sitting there looking at them. Um, a matter on which I reflected was whether, in the case of a similar process in the future, members participating should be offered um, a stipend for attendance. There are potentially advantages and disadvantages to adopting that 
that approach. On the one hand, it may minimise the element of self-selection in the recruitment process. On the other hand, a potential disadvantage is the possibility that some individuals may only agree uh, to participate because of the financial incentive to do so, and therefore uh, will not be truly committed to the process. I express the view that the Oireachtas should give explicit consideration um, as to whether in the future the participants participants in a deliberative democracy process should be paid. And what I mean by that is paid a stipend for a weekend, for attending at a weekend meeting. Um, and um, I, I don't know whether any decision has been made on that yet, but in other jurisdictions where the process has been used, the, the tendency is to uh, pay a stipend for attendance at the meetings. Another concern um, re uh, related to uh, the, the duration of the um, period for which uh, members were required to attend. Um, when the recruitment process commenced in um, August to, uh, 2016, potential members were informed that the process would run for 12 months and membership would involve attendance um, at up to 10 meetings. Now, in fact, that got stretched. Uh, partly, uh, well, to a very small extent, by Storm and the Beast from the East. But in any event, um, if the process lasted for 18 months, from October 2016 to April 2018. Uh, now, there was a provision for replacement of, of members, but nonetheless, uh, and this is an interesting thing, some 61 members served throughout the entire 18-month period, with 26 of those members attending every single meeting. And I think that's very, very interesting. Um, I recommended uh, to the Oireachtas that um, it should consider imposing a ma maximum length of service by members uh, so as not to... Uh, impinge on them and, and, and their lives too much. And my suggestion, and others may or may not agree with, was a six-month um, maximum period should be considered. Um, I'm just going to mention briefly another aspect of the work of um, the Assembly, uh, which I considered of great importance. Um, the um, resolution of the Iraq was actually mandated that an expert advisory group be established to assist uh, the work of the Assembly in terms of preparing information and advice. And in fact, uh, we had four uh, distinct um, expert advisory groups dealing with uh, 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 all of the issues because the, the, the last issue, um, fixed term parliaments and uh, member, uh, referenda, we joined them together. And at every closing uh, meeting um, of the Assembly, at my, in, my, in my closing remarks, on every occasion, um, I was running out of uh, epithets for, for praising people, but on every occasion I said, and I meant it, that the work of the um, expert advisory group had been... Um, I've forgotten the epithet now, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, invaluable. It was invaluable, and it was invaluable. And let me say, uh, those include uh, giving that invaluable service to the estate included our mediator. Um, so uh, I, I, I recommend it that um, in any future um, citizens' assembly, uh, there should be um, a, a mandatory provision that there be an expert advisory group. So anyway, that's only a, a very small element. And how am I way over? One minute, yeah. Uh, I just, I, I, I have really come to the end. Um, and I just want to say that if, if you're interested in um, seeing any of the further um, suggestions that were made in that chapter, um, the final report, and indeed all of the reports, are on the Citizens' Assembly website, citizensassembly.ie. So, in conclusion, I would say that the most significant feature of a deliber deliberative democracy process is the input of the citizens participating in it. The structure of the process should ensure 
that such input occurs at every level and at every stage. While such a process does involve, to use again the words in the introduction, a more genuine and honest dialogue with citizens, I think this is important, the kernel of a successful process is the informed deliberations of the citizens, the discussions between them and their dialogue with the legislators, the legislators uh, and with the general public through uh, making recommendations and reporting. Thank you very much.